And I'm saying the struggle of Attica 40 years ago. What young people 21 years know about Attica? They don't know nothing. They don't know that what uh, Baba Herman calls Sing Sing is Austin today. Why did it become Sing Sing to Austin, New York? They don't know about Green Haven. But if you take it and put it in a book form, and you get some young conscious rappers who can talk about Attica 40 years ago and what happened, then you tie it into these uh, beasts, what they did in Abu Ghraib in Iraq. And you know where they got the prison guards from? Where do you think they got them from? Right. Read it yourself, Ivan over terror. Ivan of terror. And how he was hanging them brothers up and beating them and pulling their testicles and all of that. He was a correctional officer in West Virginia. And, and it was only an example. And so most brothers who've been in the joint, when they were reading that, they were saying, this is what they do to us. But who knows it but you? And if you don't tell the war story, if you don't talk about it and sit these young men down and tell them that this is, I made this mistake. And if you will make a mistake, make a new mistake, not one that I've already made. You don't need to go to jail. You don't need that unless you go to jail for struggle. Unless you're fighting a struggle for your freedom and they lock you up. But what do you look like going to jail? Somebody stepped on your girlfriend's shoes or pinched on the butt and you shot him in the head. Or you were selling dope and all of that. That's not what it's about. If you're going to be a political prisoner, be in jail because I'm doing some political action to free my people. So, we must become media sad and paint our ideas. Libya is a prime example. Now, you know, for years, since 77, we had a close relationship with Libya. I want you to put on your thinking cap. Bill Moyer said that the, the American people, they said, we're smarter than that. And Bill Moyer said, hell no, you dumb than you think you are. You are dumb. Look at Libya as an example of media satellite. And if we're going to do anything to rock this boat, capture young people, and continue this struggle, we got to be media savvy today, otherwise you can't do anything. Mm -hmm. If you look at it, the picture of Libya, the human interest story, did they go to one family that's with Muammar Gaddafi mm -hmm. and ask him, why are you with Muammar Gaddafi? But they showed you how Tahuni was a teacher in Washington State, how he gave up his teaching job. He came back to use his skills to help manage the new uh, government. They show you another one coming from London. See these human interest stories? Mm -hmm. Now you think, you've been looking at television, look at all of the Muslims that died in 9-11. Mm -hmm. How many have you seen that? How's your family doing? I mean, you look at it. So the media shapes how you view things. Right. They shape how you view the struggle. Jamil Alameen is sitting there, Mumia is sitting there. Mm -hmm. We know it in our circle, but outside of our circle, how many people know the real story? So if you cannot tell the war stories to inspire the young people, 50 years on the Attica uh, celebration, people said, what happened back then? Look at Rockefeller. You got to use the example. Rockefeller decided, because the brothers up there called for Minister Farrakhan. So quite naturally, Minister Farrakhan called the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He said, go. And then it reached the point that Rockefeller said he would send a plane for us. And we called the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad got suspicious of it. Because Rockefeller in 72 had his eyes on the White House. And he knew that there's a certain thing that the way he had to appear, being that this news was all over the world, he had to appear strong and decisive. But to us, they would get Minister Farrakhan and then call in the National Guard and kill us and be in the house as assistant. I'd be in there with him. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, right before we go to call Minister Farrakhan and said, it looked like the governor got a handle on it. I don't think you should go, brother, and hung the phone up. And that's the only reason that we did not go to Attica. Let me conclude on this. What happened in Attica is a sign. And the brother, you said it right. The, pop, the prison population in America at that time was 200,000 people. I don't know how many thousand on paper. Today is 2.4 million with 8 million on paper. Now you say that in a, in a society, the strongest government in the world, the biggest army, best schools and education, best medical facility, but they got 
2.4 million people in jail, more than the country of China with 1.4 billion people. What is wrong in this society? The root of it is capitalism, where they use the media to advertise everything a young man or a young woman wants. And when you don't have the intellectual capacity to go out in that vicious world and earn it, then you got to have it and you can take it from somebody. And when you can't take it from someone, you drown yourself in drugs and substance and alcohol and uh, low life and sex in order to relieve the pain of what they advertise in this world that you can't have. You got to change the society and the goal.